Hey everyone, this video is finally tackling a subject I've been talking about for a while. Is an RGB modded TV going to look better than the same TV just using component video inputs? Now this particular TV has a few issues, so I'm just going to call this video part one and do a follow up video as soon as I either uh, clear up the issues with this one or do a second TV, but I still think it's pretty neat and a good peek into what it is that's going on with these things. But uh, let me first give an introduction of the TV itself and what we're going to do. The TV that we're going to be using in this demonstration is a Toshiba model number 20AF42, a 20 inch consumer grade TV. And this one happens to be manufactured in February of 2002, which is a pretty good year because it's not very old and it's new enough where it's going to have the, the later end of the CRT technology in it. This TV was modded for RGB by Jose from iFix Retro. And we did this mod a little bit different in that I wanted the SCART input on the TV chassis and not on the back plastic case. And I think that's one of the first ones that we did like that. My reasoning, of course, is so you could pop off the back and not worry about pulling out the RGB mod. So I'm not really sure if having that input so close to the tube is creating any kind of interference. It doesn't seem to be, but it's something that I definitely wanted to mention just in case I do future tests and find out that that had some kind of skew in the results of this one. For the RGB testing, I'm using a fully shielded RGB SCART cable that syncs on C-Sync. That way there is zero chance of the cable itself adding any interference or skewing the test results at all. If you take a look at the back of the TV, you see that this thing has every input that we could use for testing classic consoles, which is exactly why I chose this TV. For the component video inputs, I'm using the HD Retrovision SNES cables with the brightness switch properly selected. For S-Video, I'm using a really high quality, fully shielded S-Video cable that I got from an eBay seller. I'll leave the link below, of course. For composite video, I'm using Nintendo's official composite video cables that came with all of their consoles. And then just an RF adapter for RF. As always, these comparison shots were taken with a DSLR that was mounted on a tripod, and everything was manual settings triggered by a computer, so the camera itself was never bumped, uh, obviously manual focus and all that stuff, and the monitor, the TV itself, was sitting on a table and never moved. All of the cables were just kind of left to the side, and of course, um, only one was plugged in at a time. I don't know how you could plug more than one multi out in at a time with the same console, but just saying, uh, these tests and these pictures are as equal as could possibly be in the scenario that I had it. Now here's the little point I want to make before I really start showing any of these pictures. There seems to be something up with this TV that's making it not perfect. I mean, it's a 15-year-old TV, of course, you know, it's not going to be flawless, but if you take a look at this picture and you pay attention to the reds, there's definitely something different about that than the other colors. It's my suspicion that this is just simply a problem with the capacitors on it because the caps go all the time on consumer grade TVs. There's a million things that can go wrong. So eventually I do want to do a full cap replacement on this and a calibration do convergent strips, really just go a little too far just to make sure I have a better test bed. And of course, uh, I'm obviously when possible going to mod another one of these TVs and maybe something from a different company, not Toshiba, just to have more of a control test. So I'm definitely calling this video part one just because I don't want people to watch this video and say, you know, yes, for sure, this is the findings for all of these things. And, you know, let's just, uh, let's all treat this as nerds should. And this is just test number one and what I hope is going to be many and what I hope you guys at home uh, if you do these tests and if you mod your TVs you might just want to take DSLR shots as well just to see if we all have the same findings but anyway enough of my bullshit let me skip directly to the comparison tests I'm going to skip to the end and just show the question that everybody's been asking here is an RGB modded TV versus that same TV with component video now, this is obviously something that's much easier to tell with your own eyes in person, not looking at a picture through your own LCD monitor or something, but there did seem to be a slight difference between the two, and RGB did look better. 
Now, once again, we're really splitting hairs here. If you have a good quality consumer grade TV and you use component video inputs with a good component converter. So for uh, video game consoles, the HD retrovisions are pretty much the best you can get. If you need a more generic solution, there are others there. Don't, uh, don't use any of the crappy ones, but it's a great solution and it looks pretty darn close to an arcade monitor. So I certainly wouldn't tell people to run out and mod their TV if it already has component video input, which is kind of what I suspected from the beginning. But that's not really what my channel's about and that's not really what this video is about. At the end of the day, on this particular TV, RGB did look a little bit better. Now one thing to note in all these pictures is that RGB looked darker than the rest. And that's something that I actually find whenever you have a properly attenuated signal on a really great display, it does generally look darker because none of the details are bloomed out. It's, maybe that's not the right word to use, but you could definitely see more detail um, than something like the composite video version. Um, maybe it's something with this mod. We didn't check it with an oscilloscope, uh, but it does seem to be properly attenuated and looking good. One question I'd really like to answer is why does the RGB input look better? And one suspicion that I've had since we first started discussing this stuff is that maybe because we're skipping all of the processing of the actual chips on board, you're just going to get that little bit better of an analog signal. Because don't forget, whenever you're talking about analog signals, everything that you put in that chain is going to lower the signal quality just a tiny bit some more than others of course so maybe technically speaking it is actually looking identical it's just that we're skipping a lot of the processing chain and going directly into the rgb inputs that are being fed into the tube itself and from that perspective maybe if we went directly to the gun and did an rgb to uh, to component video comparison maybe those would look identical and now we're really talking about craziness and things that i wouldn't even recommend people try this was really just to you know uh, to compare the component video inputs versus an RGB mod. So after seeing this in action, my conclusion is the same as it's been since I first started getting the question, and that if your consumer grade CRT has component video inputs, just use those, because it's a great quality image. It looks really close to an arcade monitor, and you're going to be very happy. Um, as far as I've seen in this one test, the quality of RGB over component isn't enough of a boost to, to risk to risk your life RGB modding a TV. Don't forget how dangerous that can be. And also for all the time and effort. I mean, you already have a great solution, and these things are, are just overall a, a great, fun way to play classic consoles. And also, please keep in mind, once again, that this was one TV, one brand, and this TV itself might not even be in perfect shape. So this is certainly not the end-all, be-all conclusion of component versus RGB on consumer-grade TVs. It really is just kind of what I've been seeing. Um, but that being said, it, if you have the ability to RGB mod a TV, especially a larger one, I really just think it's an amazing thing to do because while you can get some really great high quality RGB monitors of about 14 inch and 20 inches in size, you know, that's always going to be better than a 14 or 20 inch consumer grade TV. There's just not really a comparison between the two, both for line count and calibration issues. However, good luck finding any of the larger RGB monitors. But it is pretty easy to find a 27 inch, a 32 inch, or even 36 inch consumer grade TVs. And RGB modding those is just awesome because it's essentially like having a massive arcade monitor. And light gun games and those Sega 3D games are just unmatched on those things. I mean, it is the coolest experience you can get. And uh, all kidding aside, uh, I would absolutely, in the case of light gun or 3D, take size over quality because it just, you want to be surrounded by a TV shooting at ducks, or my favorite, Missile Defense 3D, 3D 8-bit missiles flying at you. Hell yeah, shoot those things. <laughs> so, um, as always, thank you so much to my Patreons for all your support. There's no way I could do any of this stuff without you guys. A massive and huge thank you to Jose Cruz from iFix Retro, who puts up with all my shit and comes down and helps me with all these things. Um, and I will definitely be doing more of these. Uh, I have other things I gotta get done first, but... You know, between now and, and the day I finally bite it, you're going to see many more comparison videos, probably just
is shorter than this one because I've already done all of the explanations in this video and others, but I just really love to see the difference in these things. And who knows, maybe there'll be one model TV that we find that does definitely require an RGB mod because their processing board stinks, or maybe it'll be the opposite. Maybe we'll find other TVs that, that are identical, or heck, even this TV. Maybe once I do a full cap replacement on the board and really take the time to calibrate it, maybe it's going to look identical with just the, the TV calibration settings between RGB and component. So, you know, there's a, a lot to be done with these things. I encourage anybody that has the ability to do this stuff and a DSLR to do the same tests and post them. Hopefully I'll have a place to post all these things soon. Um, so thank you. As always, post down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you next time.